This is a way of library media by giving you this equipment, helping you bring your libraries up to the 21st century standards. And whether you call it a library, if you call it a learning commons, uh, information area, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. It's a place where kids can come or anybody, your patrons can come to explore and gather information. Now, we want to remember something. As we go through and learn how to use all this equipment, just because you know how doesn't mean you need to share all that information with your students. Remember, you want them to explore too. This is about collaboration and exploration. We want them to become problem solvers, and in order to do that, you got to let them make mistakes. So this is a tool that's going to help push that forward. With the Osmo, which is also in your bag, you should see two boxes. One of them is a big box like this. And don't worry about getting it out yet. I'm going to let you get them out here in a few minutes. Relax. <laughs> and the other one is a, coat, is a box that says coding on it. So you're going to be, you should have the Newton kit. This is the, called the Genius Kit. And then coding makes it a wonder kit. And if at any point in time you have a little bit of extra money, $39 will get you Pizza Company, which is phenomenal. And it didn't come out until a month ago. So I was ahead of the game. In the, there, in the base box, which is in the large box, you are going to come up with the Osmo base, which looks like this. And this is the eyeballs. This is the eyes of Osmo. And all of this just works on iPads? Yep. The Osmo is for iPads. You sit the iPad into the space. Now you're going to notice that this is not big enough. It's built for not only a regular iPad 2 or 1, it's also built for a mini. And it comes to you with this section at the bottom, this bar, closed in all the way. And all you have to do is go, on, go into it and push the bars out and pop them out. You now sit your, Oz, your iPad right there in the seat. Don't let me drop the iPad. <laughs> and then the eye goes with the mirror portion of it toward the front over the camera eye and it works just like that that's what it's going to look like when you get when you open yours and you're going to okay but I just wanted you to see what it looks like also in the box the base box or into the, the big box you're going to have tangrams numbers and words and then you have coding but there's more. Well, Sound like it? Yes, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Because with the, Os with the Osmo, you also get online masterpiece. And we have Newton. And you, are also, you can also do Monster. And once you play with Monster, you won't want to play with anything else. I'll show you Monster. So with that, I'm going to get you started on the different aspects of Osmo. Now, we are going to ask you to create an account for yourself. So when the time comes, and you can do it on your laptops, all right? Because you're going, once you get the Osmo apps down, it's going to say you have to give them an activation code. So you have to create an account. And the online account, or where you go for the online account, is at playosmo.com. And it's, it's, there's a button that says Create Account. So when you click on that, it's, see, the Create Account button is right there. You click on that, you fill that part in, and then once the account is created, it is going to give you your, um, your login, by the way, is your email. So keep it your school board email. Use that for your login. And then there is no password for your account. So once you have created the account, then you come in up, when you come back, you can go to sign in, put in your email account.
and it's going to say, okay, I need permission. You're going to go into your email and see at the top of my email it says My Osmo. The account is called My Osmo. You're going to click on that, open that email, and you're going to click on Sign into My Osmo. And that logs you into your My Osmo account. And this is what the My Osmo account looks like. So the things that you have available are words. Now words is an interesting game that they get to play. It's a very sophisticated hangman. The trick to this one is you don't have to just use theirs. You build your own. And so I went out thinking, okay, what would some high school kids be t learning? And I thought, well, they do space. So you can build your own word games supporting vocabulary in any of the content areas, whether it be science, social studies, math even. And you download copyright or royalty-free images. <laughs> and then you, and you download them to your computer. And then your, your iPad can then, you put them into your account. And I'm going to show you how to do that and then you can build your own. But I went into the Hubble, Hubble telescope images and found some phenomenal images. You're seeing what the game actually looks like. You, if you've already downloaded it, which I have, you click play. And I'm going to verse it against somebody else. Zen is against a computer. There's a name for that. I'll give you a clue. It's, it's a nebula but you got to know the name of the nebula. This is thing, and what, what you do is you have, when it's up on its stand, you have alphabet letters from A to Z. You move them up underneath there, the mirror sees them, and if it's part of the word, it plugs it in. If it's not, it goes at the top where the empty circles are. Like I said, this is a very sophisticated hangman. But it's things, once the kids have learned a piece, then you take that information, you build a word game out of it, and you go in and you can almost make it a quiz. This is how you create, actually create the games. Hi, today I'm going to walk you through creating a words album using some new features. First of all, make sure you're connected to the Milesma website. You can do this on your iPad or from your computer. Next, tap the My Words icon. Here, you will find every public words album to download. To access your albums, press the My Albums tab. Here, you will find every album you've created. To create an album, you can press Create New from the My Words page. So first, we need to give it a title. Let's create an album about dinosaurs. Tap Untitled Album and type in your title. Now we need photos, so we're going to tap Add Image. Here, make sure you understand the size guidelines listed. We recommend using big images. Press upload and locate your photos on the device. You can upload multiple pictures at one time. So I'll select all the dinosaur pictures I prepared on my iPad earlier. The next step is to add words. Tap an image and then hit edit. Pro tip. You can provide individual letters as hints to the players simply by surrounding them with parentheses. After typing a word, you can set the difficulty for it with the drop down selector. We're almost done with this image, but the cropping is currently off, so let's fix it with the crop tool in the settings menu. That's better. Tap save when you're done. Okay, so at this point the album has 19 images, and each of them has at least one word, so it's ready to be played. However, since it's such a great album, I'm feeling good about it, let's take things a step further, and I'll make it public for the community. First, add some tags describing your album. Then tap Publish and Confirm. At this point, the Osmo staff will evaluate my album, and if it follows the guidelines, it will be approved. Remember, published albums can't have inappropriate or copyright material, or else they'll be rejected. If you want to play dinosaurs, press the download button, 
and press open. Then you can play your album. By the way, we feature new Words albums every week on our website and offer special rewards to the people who create them. This could be you. There are two things about that you need to remember as you're doing this. The first thing is when you find the images you want, you want to be sure it's a big size or screen size. I discovered screen size is perfect. Anything else is too small. So definitely you want the biggest size you can get because Osmo has to be able to fill the screen with it. Okay? And there was one other piece she said that I... The parentheses. Oh, parentheses. Don't forget, if you want to give them clues, you put parens around some of the letters, those letters will give them clues about the Im images. And the other thing is the difficulty level. You'll see it says easy, medium, hard, and then it says impossible. <laughs> So if you go to the impossible stage, you want to give them some clues. All right, so that's how you handle the words. There are a lot of training videos on the Osmo website. So if you can't, I mean, if you want to see this again, you can. But I'm going to, I tell you what, the kids, once they get a hold of this, they're going to be able to handle it all on their own. Now, numbers allows you to do addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I did not play with it long enough to see if division could be added in. So we're going to hear what they think about numbers. It's complicated. It makes me get really sweaty. Sometimes it makes me feel sad because I feel so dumb. When I have to take a math test, I get so stressed out. You feel like really under pressure. I get a little bit nervous. How to make it more fun? Probably more games. Make it a little more creative. I just want anything other than worksheets. people are out of nowhere called out to write something on the board and you don't know what it is you feel like all embarrassed but when you play numbers it's just fun because you could show people how to play you could play with each other and kind of compete in a way what are you playing i'm playing math do you want to try yeah okay you have to try and match the numbers with the bubbles on the screen. So five. Yes, I'm dying to get this big. Let's make this six. Okay. Now seven. Now ten. We passed the level. Yeah. Yay. We finished it. With Osmo, you're learning when you're playing on a video game and it's really cool and fun. Would you guys show this game to your friends? Yes, I yes. would. But everybody would fight over my iPad. Now Newton is a little different. Newton is problem solving. And it's a case of trying to figure out a way of getting something to move in the direction you want it to go. You can use anything with Newton. You can draw a picture or you can place objects because the idea is to get this dropping ball to go where you want it to be. So this is a problem solving activity where kids can collaborate together to figure out what's the best way to place or draw an object. Then you have 10 grams. We all know 10 grams, that's math. And 
I've tried the tangrams and this is not an easy choice. This is a task that is difficult because you have to be very precise about where you place these. And then you have masterpiece. Now this is the, uh, this would be the art department's favorite because this is where the kids can literally take a picture and the, it, image, it does a reverse image like an um, x-ray and then they have to draw on the paper what the image is on the screen. <laughs> Okay, but this is Monster, everybody's favorite. <sighs> Hello, new friend. I'm Mo. What's your name? Developing creativity and imagination is so critical to learning. They're taking something tangible, like a board and a marker, and then all of a sudden, whatever image they've created is automatically on the screen seconds later. And I think for kids, and really for adults that are watching, it's almost a sense of wonder. <laughs> it amazes me that the engineers at Osmo have found a way to bring to life the things that my kids draw on a pad in front of them, that it shows up on the screen and then is actually used by this little character. I love watching them laugh like just naturally create something and then be entertained by the thing they created and not just be a spectator, but be engaged. So now it's time for the really big magic. Oh no. Sit back and prepare yourself for the grand finale. In this day and age, I think kids are subjected to so much technology and a lot of technology is them looking at a screen and pointing and clicking on things. And so I think it's kind of neat to have a piece of technology that not only gets them thinking and creating things, but also make that imagination kind of come to life by drawing it and then seeing it on the screen. Ta-da! <laughs> what a show! You were great! I'll come up with new tricks for our next show. See you soon! I discovered at first you don't need the board. I just had a whiteboard and it worked. The kids drew on the whiteboard and he was able to pull it up. But if you want to get the creativity board, it's another $45, I think it was, because you get a board, you get a bag that's the wiping bag to wipe the board off, and you get the markers that go with it. Then we have coding. Now this is the big one. Coding is literally going to teach kids a skill that they will be using in the future because that's where this world's headed. I firmly believe that someday we're going to look like the Enterprise and 
the world as it is then. So. What are you playing? I'm coding. Each of these blocks is a command Abby follows. So teaching them how to code or giving them the opportunity to learn to code is where we want them to be. So now it's your turn. If you will, get your Osmos out of your box, out of your bag. You don't need your laptops. You can close your laptops, put it away. Now you're going to play with Osmo. All right, guys, so the next thing on our agenda today is to take a look at the Ozobots, those fun little computers some of you I saw sneaking out already playing with. This little tool that you have gotten and you've been playing with, of course, is the Ozobot. Just out of curiosity, if you're someone who has been fortunate enough to have seen the Ozobot at some point and to maybe pick up a couple for your school, just give me a quick hand raise. I'm curious where you are. Okay. Now, you folks are going to be a little bit of help at the tables that you're at, but it's really important that you're not too much help because I want you to think back to when you first got that Ozobot and you were trying to figure out how to make it do what you wanted it to do, and sometimes it behaved and sometimes it didn't. That part was the part that we want kids to struggle through, and we want your teachers to struggle through when they start playing with them first as well. So don't share too many of the secrets and tricks and tips you've picked up with them because we want them to feel them as well. So the Ozobot basically is a little robot. It's the smallest of its kind. And if you were looking at the Ozobot that you had in the little now bubble container, you'll notice that it's got some little wheels that help it to roll around. And it also has five openings with lights that shine out of them. Those are the Ozobot's eyes. And it uses those eyes to sense colors and patterns on a piece of white paper or on an iPad through a program. So this is a little picture of the bottom of the Ozobot since you're being so good and you don't have yours out in your hand. You'll see those sensors and the little wheels. It's really important, just a quick tip, that you keep those clean and the little wheels kind of dust free. So if those little wheels get a bunch of dust in them or they get all mucked up, then they're not going to run as smooth. So keep them kind of clean. I believe you can maybe blow them out a little bit, maybe the, a little light alcohol swab just to keep them nice and clean. The best way, though, is going to be to make sure you put them back in that case when you're done using them. So Ozobots basically are a really cool way, one, to teach kids coding and getting them to think about problem solving and really how computer science works. Right? It's a really concrete way to get them thinking about those pieces. The other really nice thing is it's a, a great tool for your makerspace. So if you're starting to look into that concept in your uh, media center, this is a good little tool to add to that because it really is a way for kids to have to problem solve, to get you know, that whole rigor and you know, to get that, that level of, oh, I'm so frustrated, but I need to persevere and figure this out. So one of the things that you're going to have in your kit with your Ozobots, you should have your charged Ozobot now, and you all saw that little USB charger. Again, you're gonna wanna probably find a little plastic container or something to keep it safe so that those pieces stay together. 
plain white paper you're going to need. And you actually got a little set, and I'm going to steal yours really quick so I can show them. You got a little set of markers from Ozabot, but please know that when these run out, which they will because they're water-based markers, and children are wonderful and they always cap things right away. No, <laughs> adults don't do that either. So don't panic if your markers go dry. That doesn't mean that your Ozabot is now useless and you have to try to figure out where to get these. It works with any water-based uh, markers. Sharpie um, markers. Sharpies work great. Um, so it's really any of them. Five millimeters seems to be the best one. So it makes the best lines. Yeah, chisel, yeah. So we've given you these so you have them to work with today and to get you started. But again, don't panic if they run out. So they come in red, blue, green, and black. And we will have, just like with the Osmos, we'll have ordering information on the site for you so that you um, can order them if you want to. So how do you control the movement of this fabulous little robot so it's not just spinning randomly all around your desk? Basically, it's done using a combination of red, blue, and black codes. So one of the sheets that you got looks like this. And this is a combination of all the different codes that you can use to make your Ozbot move all around. And you'll see there's ones to, de to determine its speed, direction, timers, cool moves, counters, winds and exits, all sorts of different things that you can do. This is about all I'm going to tell you. You also have on your sheet, on your table, you have some white pieces of paper. So what I'm going to have you do, and I'm not going to give you incredibly detailed directions because I want you to figure it out. That's part of it, right? You're going to grab a piece of white paper. I'm going to give you a couple directions. This first one's going to be pretty simple because, again, I want you to explore. And I don't want to give you too many directions on what to do because part of the beautifulness of Ozabot is figuring it out, right? Thinking about it, problem solving. And you are very smart people, so you will do a great job. So the second thing you need to make sure you have handy is that sheet that I showed earlier with all the different codes. Have that handy. And in about two seconds, I'm going to ask you to take out your Ozabot. Some of you already have because you're so excited. Your Ozabot and your markers. And I just want you to play. I want you to figure out a path that you can take your Ozabot on. I want you to use the codes. If you want to in all of your kits, it also comes with this neat little map so you can kind of get an idea of what some of them look like. Right now, I just want you to play with your markers. Okay, just your markers and a piece of paper and your Ozabot, okay? Here's the rules. You cannot raise your hand and ask us, why isn't he moving the right way? I want you to try to figure it out. If he stops and he doesn't follow the path the right way, look at your path and look to see what about your codes could you tweak and fix. You have some tips if you must use them, but try to hold off from looking at the tips and just see if you can figure out how to problem solve it yourself. Yeah.